Hello. I am presenting my paper, Really Robustly Influencing Latent Intent. Current autonomous cars act defensively and only react to the cars around them. But for a more natural and efficient interaction, it is important for the autonomous car to influence the other cars around it, just like a human would. For example, consider the video shown here. On the left, you see an autonomous car trying to cross an intersection. It fails to coordinate with the other car and ends up stopping midway when the other car starts moving, even though they were going in different directions. On the right, the autonomous car fails to merge into the lane. It is only reacting to the traffic around it and trying to find a way to merge into the desired lane. In both these scenarios, the coordination would be more seamless if the autonomous car would use its actions to influence the cars around it. For example, it can slowly start entering the left lane to, the, to let the car behind it know that it wants to merge. There are existing methods that can influence humans, but these methods assume that the humans are static. That is, they respond in the exact same way to the robot's actions in every interaction. This assumption fails in practical scenarios where humans often adapt and change their behavior as they repeatedly perform a task. On the contrary, our method does not assume stationarity in human partners. We learn a robust policy that can influence changing human partners. Moreover, we can use the train policy to quickly adapt to new humans that the robot has not seen before. Consider an example environment shown here. The robot is trying to reach its partner that moves on the circle. How the partner moves depends on what the robot does, and different partners can react differently to the robot. For example, the human on the left moves clockwise when the robot goes outside the circle and counterclockwise otherwise. Contrast that with the rightmost partner which moves clockwise regardless of what the robot does. Our method enables the robot to influence all three different partners and quickly adapt to a new partner besides the three shown here. In each interaction, we refer to the human's behavior as their latent strategy, which is denoted by Z. This latent strategy changes in response to the robot's actions according to a set of rules, which we call the human's latent dynamics, F. Tau is the interaction data, which is a tuple of robots' states, actions, and rewards. In the previous example, the position of the partner on the circle is the latent strategy. How the partner moves is the latent dynamics. Our method consists of two parts. The first part is training with a pool of partners. Here we assume that the robot has access to a certain number of human partners or latent dynamics that it can train with. In order to influence its partners, the robot needs to first infer how their behavior changes in response to what the robot does, that is the latent dynamics. We use an autoencoder to approximate the dynamics of the partner and predict what it will do in the next interaction. The encoder takes as input the history of last k interactions from tau i minus k through tau i minus one. Even though the partner only reacts to the robot's actions in the last interaction, different partners can react differently. Therefore, we need a history of interactions to accurately predict the current partner's latent strategy. Next, we train a policy that is conditioned on the predicted latent strategy. Using this policy, the robot chooses actions that exploit the partner's latent dynamics and influences them towards strategies that benefit the robot. But what happens when the robot encounters a new partner that it did not see during the training? Our intuition is that the robot already has a policy with a lot of useful influential behaviors. So instead of training the policy again, we use the previously trained policy to quickly adapt to the new partner. To do this, we train an autoencoder that predicts the latent strategy for this partner then we sample a data set of trajectories xi i from the frozen policies trajectory space. These trajectories combined with the predicted latent strategy is passed through the trained decoder to predict the corresponding reward. This gives us a pool of trajectories along with their predicted reward labels. From this pool, we choose a trajectory with the maximum reward for the next interaction. To validate our approach, we conduct a between participant user study where we test our approach, really transfer with the baseline method, silly. In the user study, a human robot team builds a Lego tower. 
The robot wants a specific tower which is unknown to the user. The tower that the users build in, in an interaction is their latent strategy. The users will have a preference of how they want to build the tower. For example, they might take the Lego block closest to them and place it at the bottom of the tower. This is an example of a latent dynamics. So the robot can pass the blocks to the user in a specific order such that they build the desired tower, like putting the bottommost block closest to the user. The robot can receive a maximum reward of zero when the tower is correct and a minimum of minus 800 when none of the blocks are in the right order. The videos here show how the robot interacted with the users. It placed the blocks in front of them in an order specific to the user such that they build the right tower. The plots show the robot's rewards versus the interactions. The left plot belongs to the baseline method silly, and the one on the right belongs to our method, really transfer. It is seen in the videos that the baseline method fails to figure out the right order for passing the blocks to the user and places them all at the same distance. Our method, on the other hand, quickly figures out how to pass the, pass the blocks to the user in the correct order. We see that with our method, the robot was able to successfully influence the users to build the correct tower after less than 30 interactions, as the rewards quickly go close to zero. On the other hand, the baseline method received rewards between minus 400 and minus 600, indicating that the users did not build the right tower, although the baseline was not successful in influencing the users at all.